can you imagine that in a car? I think all the millennials would be so confused. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Holy shit, look at all that stuff. Wow. Oh my god. This is confusing. Okay, so I've been spraying again today, and this is the first somewhat real rain that we've had in a while. Um, but I'm going to pull the tractor over here, and I'm going to talk your ear off for a little bit because there's a... There's a subject that I'm going to touch on that is really starting to bug the crap out of me. Um, and I think everybody that watches my channel understands, well not everybody because uh, there was some comments made on well, yesterday's video um, about sprayers. All, all sprayers need to be banned because I'm poisoning the air and uh, that farmers are fat and lazy and, you know, they ride around in tractors all day, which are climate controlled and, you know, that, that uh, you know, we also impede the uh, highways and preventing them from getting to a real job that, where they can actually be more productive than any farmer could be. Now, while I was reading these comments, I, I just, it amazes me because there is a growing thought process between um, non I'm going to actually shut the tractor off. There's a growing thought process between, uh, yeah, with non-agricultural related people. And I'm not saying you're all like that, but there's a, a large portion, and it's getting bigger every day, that have this idea that farmers, like myself, um, are trying to poison the city people. And it, it's really kind of sad because, you know, as I sit in this tractor and I drive around all day, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. You know, it's not too bad. It could be a front suspended tractor, you know, like the other two that I bought. But this tractor works for what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. And so is your Lexus, your Mercedes, or whatever it is that you drive to work every day. Um, you know, but we're not trying to poison you. What I'm spraying on the fields uh, is actually just nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen being the what makes up uh, somewhere around 85% of the air that you breathe. Well, that's what it is. It is in concentrated form. It is, I believe, derived from some kind of an ammonia, but it is what you breathe. So I'm not polluting the air with anything uh, that isn't already in the air. As a matter of fact, I believe they take it out of the air to produce it and concentrate it into the form in which I am applying to the fields because I know if I don't use the proper type of nitrogen it becomes volatile, it goes off into the atmosphere where it is an inert gas and it will not hurt anybody. Now some of the chemicals that we do use to, for weed control uh, which will boost our crop, um, I don't agree with some of them, uh, but you know what? I use the safest ones that I can because I don't want to die. I mean if, by a slim chance, these people that don't grow their own food, which I guess I could, I could classify them as city or town folk or non-ag folk, that's what I should use, the word non-ag. Um, if, by some slim chance, you get any of this uh, so-called poison, the... Uh, you know, so-called poison into your system, um, it's not going to kill you. Uh, you would have to consume large amounts of it in order for it to have a negative effect on your body. Uh, I deal with this stuff uh, about twice a year, some of these chemicals, like 2,4-D or Banville, which is a broadleaf weed killer. Um, I don't use huge amounts of it. I don't use unnecessary amounts of it because it costs money. And that brings me into the next part of this video as to what a lot of city folk or town folk or non-ag folk think that we're lazy and we make millions of dollars and we don't pay taxes and we receive government funds to do what we do because, you know, we're just stupid, fat, lazy farmers. Well, I can honestly tell you that anybody that I've ever brought with me in a tractor in this tractor or any other tractor has never lasted a complete day with me. Not even Teresa. 
I mean, she is quite the awesome girl. I mean, she'll climb in the buddy seat here, and she'll hang out with me pretty much all day, but there comes a point when her ass gets sore, and she wants out of here. But, you know what? I have to continue going. Uh, so, we're not lazy, and this work isn't as easy as you'd think, because we are actually on the roads with non-ag folk that try to kill us. Timothy twice today, and I'm starting to think that they're targeting us uh, to try and run us off the road, because it's happened to me twice this week, my father countless times, and they're really flirting with death. Uh, if you hit this tractor, it's 21,000 pounds without the 12,000 pound sprayer on the back. So what do we have? 33,000 pounds? 33 pounds, thousand pounds of iron, plus the 11 tons of shit that goes in that tank if it's full. So there's another 22. We're somewhere around 45,000 pounds. 44, 45,000 pounds. So, uh, yeah. Um, we're not lazy. We don't make insane amounts of money. We're not, you know, millionaires per se. I guarantee you by the end of spring, 99% of the farmers that have, um, that have, uh, 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 that farm full time, their bank accounts are so pathetic that they, they're just like, oh, man, if I get any poorer, I'm going to have to go on to welfare. Um, I personally have not received any uh, subsidy payments in the last four or five years. I don't think that what they gave me was, well, what they gave me, I had to work for it. It wasn't like it was free. Um, I had to fill out paperwork. Uh, to allow, to let the U.S. government know exactly what I was doing, and they gave me a few dollars. The last year that I did this, uh, did went into the Farm Service Agency, I think I got about $1,200. It took me over a week and a half of work, of work, going in to the office, filling out paperwork, running down property owners, getting their signatures, and doing all the happy horseshit that I had to do, just to receive that $1,200, it was probably more like two and a half weeks of work. And it wasn't, you know, I mean, if I clumped them all together. So, what's $1,200? I mean, and to me, if I spent that much time in this tractor seat, I would have made a lot more. You know, I'd have been able to do more in the field and, you know, to, to bring income to my, to my farm and my family. Uh, I still owe money from last year. So, if I was a millionaire... Uh, I think that uh, you would, you would well, you would think that I, I would have all my bills paid. Yes, I am about ready to write the big fat check for the last amount that I owe, which kudos to me. I've worked my friggin' ass off to do it, um, and I'm not shy about saying this. In the last three months, I have had to come up with 100, over $145,000. That means that I've had to haul a shit ton of hay. And I don't know what, the, what a shit ton equals out to, but it's a lot of hay. So if it comes down to you thinking that we're lazy, that's, you know, it's just off the chart. But I can guarantee you, and these are my closing arguments, that I don't want to poison the general public. I don't think there's a farmer out there that wants to poison the general public. Um, there are commercial farmers, which I'm still a family farm. I haven't gone public. But there are some people out there, some commercial farms that, you know, uh, Buffett, uh, not Warren, but with Howard Buffett, he has bought millions and billions of dollars worth of land, and they're, he's probably one of the largest farmers in the country. If you go on to that USDA website to look up that amount of money that he's received, that'll blow your freaking mind. Um, yeah, they, I mean, some of the largest recipients of that uh, that subsidy, they reside in Los Angeles, California. They reside in New York, New York. They reside in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia, and all these other big, rather large cities. So, uh, before you flip out on a person like me and 99% of my followers uh, about receiving subsidies and getting rich off of taxpayers and taxpayer tax breaks, you're barking up the wrong tree here. Um, yeah, because it just, it just doesn't happen. Uh, yes, if you go to the USDA website and you look under my name, you're going to see that I have received a large chunk of money. The funny thing is, and I say it's funny, but it's not funny because Joe Public can go onto that website and say, oh my God, 
looks like Wes Pandy there, he made, you know, he got $200,000. Now, I don't know if that's what it is or not, but it, it could be. It could very well be. It could be more. It could be less. I don't know. I haven't looked at it in a long time, and I just really don't care what it says because I know that 90% of that number were loans. And I know every farmer out there that hears somebody say, oh, you get subsidies. I was to the USDA website, and I saw, I saw what you got. Well, everybody that's ever gotten money from that knows that it's a loan. It's a loan against your crop, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, rye, barley, whatever the hell you had. Uh, you can take a loan against it, and you have to pay it back. Yes, it's a low-interest loan. It's like 1% or 2%. It's not much, and you'd be a damn fool not to use that money if you had grain in your bin and you could borrow against it. So if you're a city folk or non-ag folk and you don't understand what I'm talking about, go to that website. Uh, look it up. I don't even remember what it's called, but you can look it up and farm subsidies. You'll see my name. You'll see that my grandmother actually has received a hell of a lot more than I have because she farmed a hell of a lot longer than I have. She's 92 years old. And uh, you'll also see that there hasn't been much money or any money given in the last several years because we've walked out of that office. It's more work than it's worth to get that little bit of money. Um, and right now, thanks to Obama, we don't even get anything. They just want us to go in there and be good little farmers and farmettes and, and uh, report this stuff for absolutely no benefit whatsoever. Crop insurance has been fucked up so bad you can't even stand it. But anyway, I hope you, I cleared some things up for you. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to poison the world. I want to produce a crop. I want to... Uh, raise my family. I want to retire with dignity and with some money in the bank. And, uh, you know, so when I do get old, I can pass it on to my children and uh, passing it on. And this was another thing. And I'm making this video very long, but another thing, I mean, even in these comments, these people, this person, it was one person was just really off the wall stupid. And, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, you're farming land that was given to you. Well, anybody that farms land knows that when mom and dad get older, you're actually supporting them. And it's not free in the end because you have to pay Uncle Sam huge amounts of money to keep that, to keep that piece of property. And honestly, my grandparents did not inherit that land. They bought that land for it. You know, I mean, that's just the long and the short of it. I, I mean... It's not like I got two million or three million dollars in my back pocket, but you know, I can pay for that. What the hell? I've paid for over two million dollars in equipment that I still own and some that I sold off or scrapped. I mean, still, I've paid for that. So, what the hell's the difference if I pay for two million dollars worth of land? I don't know. And I know there's a lot of farmers out there that do buy the land from their parents because their parents, that's their parents' retirement. You're either going to support them until they're old and they pass away and then pay the inheritance tax to the government or you're going to buy it and uh, they'll have the money to go cruise the Caribbean in a, you know, in a Disney cruise and, and you pay for, pay a bank for it back. I don't see the difference, but, you know, to each their own. I mean, all town folks, not all town folks, but 90% of all non-ag folks think that we're just farmers are so lucky to do it you know i invite anybody that wants to come out to the farm to sit in the seat next to me from actually the multiple seats that i sit in during the course of a day my day starts at four ninety percent of the time my day starts at four it is now i'm going to say it's somewhere around six o'clock no nope, it's five o'clock ten minutes after five so i've already gone on thirteen hours and I got this tank, I gotta finish spraying out, I gotta get back to the farm, I gotta load up again, and I'm gonna go out one more time. It takes me about three hours to do a trip right now, because I'm getting farther and farther away from home. Uh, so there, thanks for watching, please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I want that silver play button. Thanks again.